Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today, let's talk about finding a parametric representation or parametrization for uh, paraboloids z equals nine minus x squared minus y squared. Now, as you can see that we actually want to just parametrize the whole paraboloid. So this one is actually quite easy to do, okay? So what we can do is that we can simply just let u be, I mean, let x be u and let y be the v. So we can let x and y be our parameters and so that we can actually find the z and then we can have our parametrization. So how do we do that? Well, first, let's just write this down. So we are going to get, well, first, we are going to just let x uh, write down x and then um, y and z. Okay. And then we are going to say, okay, so our x is one of the parameters. So we call it u and then the other, the other one is the y, right? We call it v and then our z. Now z is actually dependent on x and y. So if we plug the u into the x and plug the v into the y, okay? So what happens is that if you just do the calculation right here, so z is equal to nine minus x square minus y square and we plug the u into the x, so we're gonna get u square, and then plug the v into the y, we get v square here. So our z would be nine minus u square minus v square, okay? And there are no restrictions for the u and the v, so you can see that u goes from negative infinity to infinity, right? And then same thing for the v. If you want to write it in the vector form, then we can also write it in the vector form, so we can have r of uv, is equal to, well, for our first component, it will be the u, right? So it will be the x component, and then the y component would be the v, and then the z component would be 9 minus u squared minus v squared. And then, so that's it. Okay, and then now we are going to do a similar problem. Okay, we are going to, uh, this time we are going to parametrize a portion of the problem, and that will be different from this one. Now this one we gotta think a little bit more because this time you, we are really just parametrizing a portion of the paraboloid, not the whole paraboloid. Uh, which portion? The portion that is above the plane z equals five. And then you may say, what does that look like? Well, first we can just make a uh, the drawing right here. So the paraboloid, okay, so the paraboloid opens down because of the negative x squared, negative y squared, you can see that they're uh, both coefficients are negative, so it opens down. With the nine, the nine tells us that we shift the whole problem nine units up, so the vertex is at zero, zero, nine for the z. So you can see that um, we have the whole problem right here, and then the plane. It's going to just cut it off like this. So this plane is z equals five right here, and we don't really want the portion that is below the plane, as you can see. So we don't want the bottom portion, we just want this top portion right here. And then you may say, how do we, um, how do we parametrize this portion right here? Um, you can see that the projection is circular, so we can actually use cylindrical to parametrize this. This okay. So um, let's just review first regarding using cylindrical. Um, <clears throat> what happens is that well, let me just recall it right here. Is that we are going to have what x equals r cosine data. Okay, and then y is equal to r sine data because the projection on the xy plane is circular. So that's why we let x be r cosine and then y be r sine. And then z will simply just be the z. Okay, so now how do we do it? Well, first we need to know what this intersection is. So we want to find the curve of intersection between those two. And then you may say, how do we do that? Well, we can set z equal to five for this equation. So we are going to just look at the intersection first. So we're talking about this intersection right here. Okay, so we are going to just plug the five into this, this is e here. So we're gonna get five equals nine minus x square minus y square. And then let's try to move things around here. So we are going to get, we're gonna get what? We're gonna get x square plus y square. If I move those two to the left side and then I move the five over. So we get nine minus five, which is four. So you can see that this is actually a, what? This is a circle. As you can see, this is a circle. This curve in this section is a circle of uh, radius what radius you can see that from the four is radius two and then uh, of course it's centered the origin right i'm not going to write it down so now um 
what happens is that when it comes to doing the parametrization, this is also needed because this is this determines the uh, the bounds for the R and the data. Okay, so now what should we write? So now we can start writing this. So x equals u v, and then y. I mean x is x of u v, and then y of u v, and then z of u v here. Okay, so how do we figure this out? <clears throat> Well, we can actually just use R cosine data, but in uh, instead of using R and data, we can actually just convert them into U and V, or you can simply just stay with R and data, so it's up to you. So I change the R into a U, so I'm going to get U and then cosine, and then the data changed to V, so I'm going to get U cosine V. And so just to keep that in mind, that this is simply just the R, and then um, this is simply the data. Okay, so now for the y, then I I can just change the r into a u again, so I get u and then sine of the data change the v, so I'm going to get the v here. Okay, so that's simple. And then you may say, what about the z? I cannot just put the z here, right? And then what really happens is that because I'm parametrizing this, still it's part of the paraboloid, right? So I'm going to use this for the z. So we get nine minus nine minus what? <clears throat> So let's do some calculation on the size. So we are going to get what? Nine, okay. So we get nine minus, well, yes, z is equal to nine minus x squared. Now x squared is the square of this thing. So we are going to get u cosine v and then square and then minus and then u sine of v square. And so what do we get here? We get nine minus u squared cosine squared v and then minus u squared and then sine squared v. Okay, and then we can factor the u squared. So we're gonna get nine minus u squared and then we get cosine squared. Actually, I factor out the negative u squared. So I get cosine squared v plus sine squared v. And you can see that this turns into a one, right? So we simply just get nine minus u squared. So we are going to have this expression for the z. So we get nine minus, what is that, u squared. So we get u squared right here. Okay, so we have our um, parametric representation for this portion of the surface, but that's not enough, right? Because we also need to set the bounds. So right now, what happens is that we are going to have um, the u and the v. Now, the V is the easy one because the V is really just the same thing as the data, right? As you can see. So what really happens is that we are going to simply just put what? Well, actually, why is there a dot right here? So, okay. Now, for the V, we are going to go from what to what? Um, because it's the whole circle. As you can see, that is the complete circle. We are going to go from 0 to 2 pi. So that's easy. And then the U is also something that we need to figure out. The U is actually the same thing as the R. What is the radius? The radius is uh, the radius is two. So we are going to go from zero to two. And then now we have our parametrization. Yeah, if you want to write it in the vector form, then you can just simply just put that in. So I'm going to just quickly do that here. So we are going to have R of UV. Okay, and what is that? That would be u cosine v, and then u sine v, and then 9 minus u squared. And then also we need to put the bounds, right? So u is between 0 and 2, and then v is between 0 and 2 pi. So now we have the parametric representation for that portion of the problem. Okay, so as you can see that uh, it, we do it really differently compare, when you compare with the, uh, the one that we just did, right? That's the whole problem and this one is just the portion. And for the portion, it's actually better to use the cylindrical. Okay, so that's it for this one. Um, I'm going to do more parametrization for surfaces next time, so please stay tuned. I will see you next time.